Your doctor has recommended that you undergo hip replacement surgery, but what does that actually mean? The hip joint is the place where the thigh bone, called the femur, and the hip bone, called the pelvis, meet. As you walk, the ball-shaped end of the thigh moves within a cup-like depression on the side of the hip. As long as the thigh can move smoothly against the hip, you're able to walk comfortably. But over time, especially in patients who suffer from arthritis or rheumatism, the hip joint can wear down. Cartilage, the tissue that cushions the bones and makes it possible for them to move smoothly against each other, can wear away. When this happens, the bones rub together, causing pain and even restricting the ability to walk. In some cases, hip surgery is recommended for people who have suffered a hip fracture. No matter what the cause, one of the most effective ways to fix a damaged hip is to replace it surgically. In this procedure, the ball-shaped bone at the top of the thigh is removed and replaced with a metal substitute. The hip socket is widened and lined with a smooth pad that allows the metal ball joint to move more freely against the pelvis. Hip replacement surgery is a major operation, but your doctor believes that the procedure, followed up with physical therapy and time to heal, will result in reduced pain and greater mobility. When it comes to hip replacement surgery, there are no real alternatives. Physical therapy can sometimes reduce stiffness and increase flexibility, but it cannot cure the underlying disease. However, hip replacement surgery is an effective way to improve your ability to walk and reduce pain. Choosing not to undergo hip replacement surgery will not normally put your health or life at risk but it is very unlikely that your damaged hip joint will heal. So without surgery, it is almost certain that your condition will not improve and may become worse over time. Of course, no surgical procedure is completely risk-free, but your physician feels that if you decide not to undergo the recommended procedure, your quality of life will not improve and your ability to walk normally will be reduced. On the day of your operation, you will be asked to put on a surgical gown. You may receive a sedative by mouth, and an intravenous line may be put in. You will then be transferred to the operating table. In the operating room, the anesthesiologist will begin to administer anesthesia, probably general anesthesia by injection and inhalation mask. The surgeon will then apply antiseptic solution to the skin and place a sterile drape around the operative site. Then when you are asleep, the surgical team will make an incision over the hip and along the thigh. The team will pull the skin aside to reveal the muscle tissue below. They will then make another incision to reveal the hip joint. Next, the team pulls the top of the thigh bone out of the hip socket. Using a precision surgical saw, your doctor will carefully remove the ball-shaped end of the thigh bone. Then the surgical team will use a high-speed drill to hollow out the top of the thigh bone. A specially fitted artificial ball joint slides into the top of the thigh bone. Next, your doctor will smooth the inner surface of the hip socket. Once the hip socket has been thoroughly cleaned, the artificial lining will be secured and placed with special screws. The artificial ball joint is turned inward and fit into the socket. 
the team carefully checks to make sure that it fits and allows the full range of normal motion. Muscle and other tissues are closed over the joint using dissolvable stitches. A temporary draining tube may be added. Finally, the skin is closed with sutures and protected with sterilized strips. Most patients experience at least some pain following surgery, but if properly handled, it shouldn't present any serious problems. Pain used to be regarded as an unavoidable side effect of surgery, but today, pain can be managed with great effectiveness. And as the patient, you have an important role to play. Before surgery, be sure to ask the medical staff about the type and duration of pain normally associated with your surgery. Find out in advance about your pain management options. Work with the staff to develop a pain management plan. Discuss your options. There are alternatives to drugs that can lessen your need for pain medication. Ask your doctor for help in finding a pain management class. Many of these workshops teach helpful relaxation techniques, positive thinking, and nerve stimulation exercises. Following surgery, make sure to let your nurse know right away how you're feeling and whether or not you are in any pain. Be specific and help them to measure your discomfort. If you're having trouble expressing yourself, try to rank what you're feeling on a scale from 1 to 10. Never be shy about asking for help. If you experience pain that just won't go away, report it to the nurse. Pain is an important indicator that helps you and your medical staff understand your body's healing process. At some point, you'll be moved to your room. While you're in the hospital, doctors and nurses will regularly check you, monitoring your progress following surgery. It's important that you realize your time in the hospital is an extension of the surgical procedure. While you're in the hospital, your medical team will continue to monitor your body's immediate reaction to the procedure just performed. That means that your time in the hospital is not really for rest and recovery, and you should expect to have your movements restricted and even your sleep interrupted by nurses or other medical staff. The amount of time that you spend in the hospital would depend on your age, your health, and whether or not any complications arise. Be assured that once your doctor feels that your condition is properly stabilized, you will be allowed to leave. Be sure to follow your doctor's advice and allow the full recommended period of time before you return to your normal routine. Hip replacement surgery rarely leads to complications. It is possible that one or both of the artificial components could come loose, requiring another operation. Muscle, nerve, or bone damage is also possible, although very unlikely. Another possible complication is a persistent residual neuralgia, or pain, around the scar. It can be either localized or general. It may develop soon after surgery, or even weeks or months later. In rare cases, the surgery does not restore full mobility or stability to your hip and thigh. 